Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my talk. I'm Wei Fan Chen, and I'm here to present our work on abstractive SNP generation. This work is done by our web-based group, include the following universities: Paderborn University, Bauhaus University, other universities, and Leipzig University. First of all, let's look at what is a SNP. I believe many of you maybe use search engine every day. For example, I want to search self-driving fuel consumption. After click the search button, I will see a lot of results. And each of them contain a title, a URL, and below it, you will see several sentences. And this is a snippet. If we look closely to this snippet, for example, by clicking into the website, like in our right hand side, we will see this snippet is actually a combination of two sentences that's selected from the original web page. That is to say, a search engine will generate a snippet by reusing the text from the web page. As a result, here we would like to ask, is this possible to generate original snippet, which means by writing the snippet completely by ourselves? However, before answering this question, we would like to know why it's necessary to do so. If we already have a reused snippet and works pretty well, why we need to have another snippet that do not reuse the text? The problem we face here is the ancillary copyright issues, and it's happening in many European countries that they limit the fair use of news texts. So if we want to generate a snippet for a news article, but you are not allowed to use the text anymore. And what are the Google's reactions toward this? For example, either remove these publishers from their search results, like in Germany, or they close this Google News service, like in Spain, or they redesign a whole interface that doesn't need a snippet. However, if we still want to have a snippet in the search result, what we can do? On the other hand, given a recent development on testing such technologies, especially on deep learning, it is possible to change such model. Also, we see there are a lot of attractive summarization tools already been developed. So it would be possible to change such attractive snippet generator. There are some obstacles we need to solve in order to have an abstractive snippet generator. First of all, we need to have a sufficient number of training data. Secondly, we need to generate query bio snippet. And finally, of course, we need to evaluate whether our generated snippet is successful or not. As a result, in this paper, our contributions include we develop two resources of distance of vision to acquire such number of training data, which are anchor contacts and demos. Secondly, we develop variate of point generator networks to generate query bios snippets. And finally, we have a comprehensive evaluation to see if the generated snippet are successful or not. Now, let's look closely to our training examples. We need to have a query, a snippet, and a document. And we have following requirements for these components. For the document, it should be from a web page, and it should be relevant to a query. Of course, it should contain a sufficient number of text, not video or image. For a snippet, you should explain the content of that document. Also, because we want the snippet to be attractive, so it should not be used the text from the web page. And the snippet should be query files as well. 
for a query, it should represent a positive information that might be needed. And also, it should be like real-world queries. Finally, the overall training data, it should cover the topic of the search domain. If we want to train such deep learning model from scratch, usually we need millions of training examples. However, where can we get these training examples? There could be multiple ways. For example, we can hire some expert and ask them to generate these training examples for us. Or like training examples are just there naturally, so we just need to collect them and then we can train the model. In our case, it's too expensive to hire this expert to generate such examples. And also, we couldn't find like a sample in real world. Then, the alternative way is to use distance supervision, which means we find some resources that are sufficient, similar, or they are kind of this abstractive snippet, so we can use that to train our abstractive snippet generator. So, we use the following two resources for our distance supervision. The first one is the anchor context, and the second one is the web directly description. Due to the limits of time, I will only explain the first one. So, what is an anchor context? Let me give you an example. There is a web document, and in this web document, you will see a lot of the anchor text. This anchor text contain hyperlink to another web page. For example, there is a sentence about web conferences. Web conference is an international conference on World Wide Web. So before clicking into this website, I can guess this link should contain, for example, the information of this conference, like where it is or when it is. As a result, we expect that the sentences before or after the anchor text can be used as the explanation to tell the people what to be expected to see when you visit this website. And we call this part anchor context. And then we can use this anchor context as an alternative solution for an abstractive snippet. Once we have this in mind, we can start to call this anchor contact from web pages. We consider to use a huge web collections, which are CoolWeb09 and CoolWeb12. In this two dataset, we are able to collect 31 billion of anchor contacts. However, not all of them would have a good quality and we can use them as the training examples. So we design the following filters in order to generate good quality of training examples. For example, we consider this anchor context or the linked web page. They should be English. They should not contain spam. They should be proper text. And they, of course, because we want this snippet should be abstracted, so they should not reuse the text. While applying these filters, we need to choose some parameters. For example, in an improper text filter, we need to define what kind of tags are proper, what are not. So we choose the parameters very conservatively in order to have a very good quality of anchor context. So even though we have 31 billion of anchor context in the beginning, in the end, after applying these 9 filters, we have 10.8 million of them. Given the snippet and the web document, the next problem is to extract a query. We have the following constraint for a query. First of all, it should be a noun phrase and it should be too long, so we say Mesma has 6 words. And then, to make sure the snippet and the document are query dependent. The query should appear in both of snippet and the document. Also, 
to avoid the over extracting a query from a same pair with the maximum we extract three queries for each pair. So out of the 10.8 million of anchor contacts and document pairs, we are only able to extract 3.6 million because many of them, for example, couldn't find a noun phrases or such noun phrases do not appear in both the snippet and the document. Now, let's look at this example again. We would like to generate original snippet based on the query and the web document. Looking here closely, we see this snippet is query dependent because there are a lot of query words that appear in the snippet and also in the web page. So now the next question is how can we make sure such query appear in the snippet so we can say we generate a query BIOS snippet. We would like to have this query BIOS snippet because it was shown that to have this is very important to retrieve a web document successfully. However, how can we tell a deep neural network that we like to have a query word exactly in a snippet? We thought about the following three possibilities. First of all, we can try to generate as many snippets as possible and check if some of them contain the query words. Or we can develop some rules and insert these query words into the snippet. On the other hand, we can also develop a new neural network model and then ask this neural network model to put the query word in a certain place. So, we develop a search by directional generation model and we should look at this architecture from top to down. The input of this architecture is a query and a document. And the output is a query BIOS attractive snippet. First of all, we use an encoder to encode a query and a document into a representation. Then we have two decoders. One is a decoder previous and the other one is decoder next. Given a query, we use a decoder previously to decode a word that should be in front of this query. And then we use the other decoder to predict the words after this query. Then we can compile the results of the two decoders to have a query dependent the snippet so that we make sure that the query word would be exactly in the middle of a snippet. We train following models to compare. First of all, we have two models that can generate query BIOS snippet. One trained on anchor context dataset, the other one trained on the demos descriptions. We also train three other pointer generators that do not generate query BIOS snippet. One trained on anchor context, one trained on the demos, the other one trained on very popular attractive summary dataset called CN Daily Mail. We also prepare another way to have attractive snippet. First of all, we use an attractive snippet generator to select some sentences from the web document. And then we use a pre-trained paraphraser to paraphrase it so that to have an attractive snippet. Also, we would like to see if the result can be compared with Google snippet and here we use the result from our previous paper and this snippet uh, we used from the web page. To test the model, we use about 4,000 examples for automatic measurement. For the crowdsourcing measurement, we use 100 random selected examples. To evaluate the generated snippet, we have the following evaluation metric. And it can be categorized into intrinsic evaluation and extrinsic evaluation. The intrinsic 
evaluation study the overall language quality of the generate text. On the other hand, for the extrinsic evaluation, study whether the generated text can fit your certain goal or not. In the intrinsic evaluation, we study the whole score, the fluency, the fertility, and the text we use. And for the extrinsic evaluation, we study whether it can be used a proper summary, is this query file, or we can use this snippet in a search scenario. Due to the time limits, I will only explain a few of them. You can find all the results in our paper. First of all, let's look at the fluency. The fluency can be measured automatically or manually. By automatically, we use the propensity, and this propensity is measured by the pre-trained BERT language model, and this value should be the lower the better. On the other hand, we also use crowdsourcing to label this fluency. The judges will give the score between minus 2 to 2, and the score should be the higher the better. Here, we see if the data set is larger, then in general, the snippet will be more fluent. We can find this by using propensity or by the crowdsourcing scores. On the other hand, if we force the model to generate a query by a snippet, sometimes it makes the fluency a bit worse. For example, like we see the anchor context query bias is actually a bit worse than the anchor context one. For the text we use, we measure it automatically. And note that we would like to have an attractive snippet, so this text we use should be the lower the better, and we measure it by the huge L precision. We can see that of the two baselines, the CN Daily Mail 1 and the Pearl of Pacer, they largely reuse the text in the original web page. On the other hand, for our model, no matter the trend on the demos or the trend on the anchor context, they have much lower text reuse. Next, we would like to see whether the genuine snippet are query files or not. So we ask crowdsource workers to label this. On the result, we find that our data set, if they are query files, for example, like anchor context QB or demos QB, they perform us better than the one without such query files function. Finally, and most importantly, we would like to know whether the generated snippet can be used in a such scenario. In this experiment, users are asked to judge whether they can find a relevant web page given the query and the snippet. And it shows that if we have this query by a snippet, in general, it's better than the query unbiased one. Like the anchor context query bias would be better than the anchor context one. Also, we found that the best model, like the anchor context QB, is actually performed similar to the Google snippet. That is to say, if one day Google say, sorry, we are not going to use reuse text because we are not allowed to use it as a snippet anymore, then they can apply this channel at all 2020 and use the app checklist snippet to replace their own snippet generator. After that, they can still expect they will get a similar performance because user can still find what they want. And here is the take home messages for you. First of all, we show that using to use text as snippet might not be possible in the future. Secondly, we show that using today's technologies, especially by deep learning, we are able to generate abstractive snippets that do not reuse the text and with a reasonable good quality. Thirdly, we show that we are able to acquire a big number of training data in order to train such model. However, we also show that if we want to generate a query bio snippet that have the query exactly in a certain place, it might make the fluency a bit lower. 
Also, as we discussed before, it's very important to know whether we can use this snippet in a such scenario or not. Here are the key insights of this talk. First of all, we show that if we have a sufficient number of training data, we are able to improve the fluency of the generated text. Secondly, we show that by our abstractive snippet generator, we are able to generate text without reusing the text in the original web page. Finally, we show that the best performed model performs similar to Google snippets. Thank you very much for your attending. You can find our resources in our website. And I'm very happy to answer your questions.